Uh, in the recent few days, we have seen people being taken to court, others arrested. Um, uh, we've seen all the scenarios of these things. What is he doing that others were unable to do, Karl Marx? Uh, thank you, Hilary. Um, you know, first of all, I'll say that um, when you talk of uh, Tobiko, the guy was just incompetent. And he was very clueless. He doesn't have the guts. So he was in an office that he was not actually able to feel, or even himself, he was like, he's not there, but he's there. Mm -hmm. Second to that, he was not willing to actually prosecute any case. Because considering that uh, from the background where, you know, when you do all these interviews, mm -hmm. when a candidate emerges first, why do we always go to pick the 10th candidate? Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing, uh, on the foundation alone, that tells you that there was something wrong. Picking candidates that didn't qualify to go and now work with all that competency, the effectiveness and the efficiencies now needed out of them, they cannot deliver. So I think the major problem was he was not actually a man right for the office. Second thing, he has not been in a position to display what he's made of. All okay? right. mm -hmm. And uh, if you talk of uh, Haji, you know Haji is a person who actually is from the forces. Not only that, he is willing to actually now make that, that institution to be independent and to portray it that it is worth working for the people. Mm -hmm. One person that I can actually owe my felicitation is one Nujir Haji. Because that guy is ready to make Kenya feel that there is something that is going on. Right. Today, even a young a boy around or maybe a girl will tell you that they know the name. Not because he is running around, but because he's making them feel that you've been losing money. Right. But there is a way we can recover this money. Mm -hmm. So everything gets back to the court now. So can the court also prove to us that the independence that we are talking about within these institutions, can they portray the key of the asset? Mm -hmm. Can they portray the lock in terms of now uh, prosecuting these cases to a level whereby we no longer talk of them as cases within courts? But then, can we give a time frame? Because right. election petitions, there is a time frame that they will always be concluded. Why don't we now also say, because corruption is a menace, why don't we give a time frame for these corruption cases that within six months or within three months, and we give time for this, that they need to be expedited so that we can get all these cases concluded and Kenyans recover right. the looted funds and the assets are also recovered. Right. That is what we need to hear. All right. Yes. Ngunjuri, uh, he has mentioned of competence. Uh, as you respond to the same question, yes. uh, <laughs> what is Nudin Haji doing that Kiria Kotobiko was unable to do? Okay, first of all, even be before I give my opener, let me say hi to the viewers that are watching us tonight from all parts of this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been a while since I caught up with my friend here, Karl Marx. I think this is a good convergence of ideas. Nurdin Haji and uh, his team and the way he has led the fight against corruption owes its expression to the political goodwill that we are having in the country. In not more than a year, we could hear a lot of public sentiments and political rhetorics from leaders that we will fight corruption and make sure that we end it. Then, months later, we had a handshake which affirmed the fight against corruption mm -hmm. and at least that political significance mm -hmm. has brought a lot of change in the way Kenyans view corruption mm -hmm. and in the way leaders also or find themselves in that same in that very same uh, problem. So, from where I sit, mm -hmm. we have had uh, a lot of shift from people saying, "No, don't arrest this person. He comes from a region." Yes, we mm -hmm. have some of them who are saying that even as now, but at least it is moot. All right. That doesn't count, and. Uh, the political goodwill has really done a good job. Now, you just reminded me of, the sum, of something I saw on Twitter that Mkishika um, Tunawachilia. Yes. Anyway, now uh, you just mentioned of the handshake. Uh, does it mean 
Honorable Raila has an upper hand in regards to fight against corruption? Of course, you have to look at this way. See, if Raila Odinga would not have shook hands with President Uhuru Kenyatta, then we'll be having a parallel uh, politics in Jubilee, and then we'll be having parallel politics in ODM. Thus, this would mean that when you target someone who comes from the Jubilee party, then it would, it would seem like, yes, he's from our party. But again, you also need to look at people from the other side. All right. But now, since the two protagonists, uh, that is President and uh, Raila Odinga, shook hands, at least we have seen a convergence of agreements that, yes, mm. we have lived in this country and seen, we have seen a lot of, uh, a lot of animosity in terms right. of uh, elections. We have also had corruption as a, one of the impediments mm -hmm. to economic emanci emancipation mm -hmm. of right. our people. And thus we need to come together and join hands right. and fight corruption. So it was just a merge of efforts and a merge of goodwill, mm -hmm. which then bore fruits that even generations yet to come will enjoy. Karl Marx, yes. uh, we can appreciate that the handshake brought peace but also it has brought some differences in the house, and I mean Jubilee, because we have seen uh, there is an emergence of two teams, and most of them are the people that have been mentioned. But now, uh, do you, in the first term of President Uru Kenyatta, he struggled so much in fighting corruption, and every other time he would say we are fighting corruption, but nothing uh, was forthcoming. At least this time round, we're seeing uh, heads rolling. Or do you say Honorable Raila is doing something? Um, thank you, Hilary. First of all, I forgot actually to send my condolences to uh, my friend uh, Obonyo um, because, you know, Dr. Labozo was that lady who is always true to her cause and we've lost another pillar in terms of the leadership of this nation. So my condolences to the family, to Kenyans and the relatives. Back to your question. The political goodwill, in any time you want to fight corruption, first thing you must always actually land on is supposed to be the political goodwill. Now, in this case, it is something that has been served. So the only work is now for people now to do what? To eat. And so therefore, what has happened is this. First of all, let me say this. There is no community who will convene a meeting somewhere to discuss how to steal to pilfer, to plunder a country. Some there is individual. no community who can actually sit anywhere to discuss how a, community, um, a country can be, <laughs> can, be, uh, can be stolen, you know? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you join the forces for the, the protagonists, they come together and now they say, okay, fine, can we now talk of what we are losing and why we are losing them? Mm -hmm. So what we are losing in this country, for your information, a third of our budget is lost through looting. This is not even corruption. This is outright looting. Mm -hmm. Because do you know, the executive actually convinced the common man that if you talk of a uh, better health facility, if you talk of uh, water supply, if you talk of electricity connectivity, if you talk of road, um, uh, building of roads, then those to them becomes the development that the government is doing to their citizens. Which of course, let me put it very clear, those are not part of what a civilized, sophisticated government is supposed to be talking of as development. Those are merest deliverables that a government is actually doing courtesy of the taxes. Mm -hmm. They deduct from Hillary, Karaoke and Karl Marx. Mm. Now, when a government gets to their feet, and then they say we talk of development, it is a government who will sit there and say, number one, our GDP is upward sloping. Number two, it is a government who can stand with authority and say that our public debt is downward sloping. It is a government that will talk of an economy that is export driven. Okay, before it we is a government, so much. I'm, I'm telling you there because that is where now the corruption comes. Mm -hmm. Because what the government is talking of in terms of corruption 
is what the government is not supposed even to be talking about. Because if you talk of the dams that we are now talking about, mm -hmm. these are just merest derivatives because of our taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, if money has been borrowed to go direct to the development, then how do we get to a level where now we discuss it as somebody has stolen what has been borrowed? You get what I mean, Eli? Yeah. So here, we need now to get clear to our government and ask that why do you steal what you borrowed for development? All right, but the Number question two, was... Why do we make a country look like each and every time we get an opportunity, our work is to enrich ourselves? Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So here, I think for us to stop all this corruption thing, mm -hmm. we need to shun, we need to shame, and we need to convict anyone mm -hmm. who will supply air in this nation. Number two, we need to now get back and ask ourselves, any person who will import anything that is killing agriculture in this nation, that is not a friend to Kenyans. Number three, these people does they have so much money without traces of any business. You get what I mean? Right. And then can we now get back and ask ourselves there is no something uh, the corruption is not attached to any tribe. If you still as Hillary, we now need to get you as Hillary. Mm -hmm. And then can we now make all our institutions too? Mm -hmm. Can we support, can we culture our institutions to work mm -hmm. so that all of what we need, not only a matter of only arresting them, but can we convict them, recover all, right. all the looted files? All right, but you didn't answer my question, yes. you went too far. Mm -hmm. uh, what Has Raila played, played any role? A key role, because what Raila has done has actually given the president the energy right. to give the political goodwill to the institutions to work all effectively right. and efficiently. So therefore, Hadi where is seated, he knows very well that this thing is not going to be another political uh, uh, antagonism. You know? It's about now working for the people and we need to deliver. All right. Yes. Ngojiri, very yes. fast. Yes. Every attempt to arrest these people or convict them in court, it has been met with political statements. Yes. Our people yes. are being targeted. Yeah. Uh, why is this so? If we have the political goodwill from the executive, yes. why is it so that other politicians now the legislators are here saying Apana is our person. Yes. Why is that so? Uh, okay. That one is bound to happen in any political ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And if you have observed, our country is experiencing a paradigm shift in institutional and governance liberty. Mm -hmm. The fact that a cabinet secretary and a sitting permanent secretary as well can be arrested and also charged, replaced within a few hours. Mm -hmm. That one tells you that uh, the president means business. And from where I sit, we still have a long way to go in terms of the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. And at least I'm optimistic because I've been able to see and assess and also analyze mm -hmm. the energy that is in our president. I also think that Kenyans are now beginning to become aware mm -hmm. of their civic participation duty mm -hmm. and even walking in the streets, mm -hmm. listening to bar talks, listening to women as they fetch water and listening to riverside gossips. You can hear people talking about there is this candle, there is this candle, they will mention names even if they are not sure mm -hmm. and do not possess such an analytical adept. You will hear them saying, ah, this government or this administration, mm -hmm. whether county or national, mm -hmm. is heading us nowhere. And this is now bringing and piling pressure to institution of governance to work hard. We always talk of the people's power as it was ratified. 1989 during the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Mm. That is one of uh, the stepping stone of what today is that uh, people can join together and pile pressure right. on institution of governance mm. to ensure that their voice is heard and that which will determine mm -hmm. and shape their future mm -hmm. is incorporated in that very discussion. Right. So I think we are headed in the right direction and the fight against corruption Will be, will be, will be, will be won okay. very soon. All right. he, he has mentioned like this is bound to happen. Uh, 
time is running out. So he has mentioned that uh, this will continue. <laughs> Politicians will always say something. Yeah. But now, uh, does the office of the DPP, as we speak now, have enough evidence to convict these people and make sure they go to jail? Hillary, you know, you know when you talk of suspect, then that means there is some element of criminality within the word suspect. So just that, whether it's a drop, <laughs> you've identified yourself from the people. So that drop, can you tell us why you have a drop when others does not have a drop? Mm -hmm. So in this case, it is not about, um, first of all, we need to agree. Have we lost money? The answer is yes. Were there some uh, illegal transfer of money from one point to the other? The answer is yes. Do we have any dam? No. Do we have some money lost in this country? The answer is yes. So therefore, what we've lost, this is what we are asking those people who are actually responsible uh, for these offices to get us back the money because there is no work done. Yeah. Right. So therefore, there is no any other way you can marinate it. Mm -hmm. Iconistically, we need to hold these people accountable. And for, from where is it? I think we are even trying to make uh, our courts look like uh, they are a policy making body. Okay? Mm -hmm. They need to get away from that. And so, can we have special courts, special courts, not anti corruption courts, special courts that deal specifically with anything called looting? Because me, I don't want to use the word corruption. <laughs> any looting, any theft in this country. And then we set a time frame. We need no bails for these people because we are going to expertise all these cases within a time frame. So, therefore, because you've stolen, get to those courts, prove yourself. Within a period of three months, we will know whether you need to get to committee or you need to get back and be with the people. All right. But during this time, I think we need to support um, the DCI, we need to support the, uh, the ESCC, we need to support the DPP, let them do their work. Yeah. Politicizing all these things will not give us back our money. Exactly. Those who are very good in those gatherings, funerals, churches, and whatever, the power and the magnitude at which they defend this lost money, can they also use them actually to help us recover back our money? All right. So if you see a country that can actually send the cabinet secretary for treasury to court, that tells you this thing has reached a point whereby there is, it's a point of no return. Yes, right. however, just to add on what Karl Marx is saying, that even if we were to bring ourselves out there and each and every one of us would hold those crude weapons and any other weapon that you can imagine, mm -hmm. go and remove these people from offices. That's one will not solve the problem at hand. So the assets and recovery agency mm -hmm. must really pull uh, their socks up mm -hmm. and do their job. But then, even as we talk about uh, the prosecution of uh, the suspects, mm -hmm. however, he said that there is an aspect of criminality in that. Mm -hmm. We must also remember that nobody in the law of natural justice who should be condemned right. and had. And therefore, mm -hmm. we should not have what the president termed in the State of the Nation address as vigilante justice, where because someone has been mentioned in a scandal, right. you move very fast to condemn him or her. Mm -hmm. So due process and uh, the right institutions just like the deputy president like saying, if you are not an investigator, if you are not a lawyer, and if you are not a judge, mm -hmm. please stop getting to the precipice of these cases. What you can do is to assist if you have evidence. And that is the same position that the Right Honorable Raila Odinga has shared. So let us be very careful. Okay. So that uh, we might lose. We might be chasing an antelope. Right. And uh, in the midst of that, end up chasing a squirrel. Right. So we need to be very careful so that we can uh, get the goal and what we expect to have even as we, as we speak of uh, Vision 2030 and the Jubilee government which is rushing against time to uh, fulfill on their re-election agenda. That is a big four. So okay. 
I, I don't know whether time is over or <laughs> is there anything else? Time. But, uh, but uh, correspondent, <laughs> let, let, yes. let, let, let me just. Uh, I knew you did the back yes. to that. Yes. You know the reason why sometimes we always try to make it look like when you are big fish, you can steal. You go to court, you are given bonds, you steal billions, you get bonds of millions, and then now you roam around here. The next day you will be our governor. The next minute you will be contesting for you know those nonsense. Okay. <laughs> let me tell you, if a young person who has not been given an opportunity to get a job anywhere. <laughs> get to a point whereby they can even, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you know, got these smugglers, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you know what happens? Mm -hmm. You go just try to steal anything in Dandora or wherever, Utachomwa, right? <laughs> now, why do we try to please these people that when they steal money from us, now they become gods? Mm -hmm. When now ordinary people who are struggling with their lives, mm -hmm. who cannot even get an opportunity to get something to do because somebody is stealing their future. The money they are stealing are what are making these young people now to get into smuggling. Yes, but if the opportunity could have been there for them, then we could have been talking of an environment whereby you can do business. All right. You can yes. get jobs. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So the only option is this. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, sometimes we need to be more radical when we want to deal with the, with the reality. It is, you know, the way the sentiments uh, that I always get from these politicians that, you know, we have to follow the rule of law, we have to do what, okay? The rule of law we've followed since 1963. We've never recovered all what has been lost in this country. Mark you, could it be that we've recovered what was lost or what we've been losing from 1963 to date? In this country. So this is the thing. Mm -hmm. We need, as a country, we need to get back. Anybody will be mentioned in anything. First of all, you don't hold office. Second thing, anything that touches your name. First of all, let us also recover. Let the government, first of all, recover. Especially in politics. That's what I'm saying. Let the government first of all recover. Mm -hmm. You also go to court, claim what the government is owing because you owe us. Why is it that we are the people to come for you when already we know what you are owing mm -hmm. the government all right. and the people? Mm -hmm. So before you steal our future, we also need to steal your life. All right. Oh. One, one more and by the way, revolution is almost <laughs> coming if these people are not serious. Let's finish with this. Now, uh, the Chief Justice David Maraga is on record saying we shouldn't blame the judiciary if mm -hmm. uh, they dismiss cases because of lack of evidence. Yes. You just mentioned uh, if you're taken to court, there is something. Yes. But also, we get there, there's no evidence. This man never stole. So they are set free. And what will happen? They will go back to their village and they'll be voted as governors. And <laughs> you see, at least we, what we agree on, mm -hmm. we have no sanctification for thieves. Mm -hmm. If someone is a thief, that person is a thief. And that cannot change. Mm -hmm. So someone who has already been convicted mm -hmm. is already a thief. Mm -hmm. So that one is another different case. But what we are saying, and not lose the sense of the fight against corruption, because we are also a sound people. Mm -hmm. We need to be very careful that we don't lose the fight against corruption mm -hmm. in the midst of that political mud slinging. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? So that is specifically what I'm saying. And uh, as I finish, yes, because I know you have asked me about the Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. The Chief Justice is right. And this is why in a case of a guy like uh, Rotich, you saw the DPP going all the way to Italy and uh, perhaps doing uh, their forensic and other investigations. Mm -hmm. So that was a move in the right direction and it will then go a big way in affirming the Kenyan spirit of fighting corruption. Uh, there is always a very loyal hotel at home. Uh, Gendawad, Itaga <laughs> village called, uh, I, I don't know where I am, the Wajudes Hotel. They are always watching this discussion. Mm. So that means that uh, we are spreading the tentacles All to right. the different parts of this country. Otherwise, I'm happy to be back on the set. Uh, we have had a nice conversation and uh, I link up with my friend Karl Marx, who right. we you always meet on the other side. Need to talk so so today, I don't know, <laughs> to talk again, you may hammer. Share some wisdom. So, yeah, yes. uh, your final comments. Um, I think the, the ordinary citizens now, they have to understand that corruption is easy. Mm -hmm. And it steals the future of this generation day in, day out. Thieves doesn't have any honor anywhere. They will never feel that there is anything that is lacking in this nation. So it is high time you come out and fight for your space. Because the more you lose jobs, 
the more companies are closing, the more factories are closing, the more we are going to reach a point where by now we cannot even sustain ourselves as the people who are thinking we are persevering. So it is high time. Corruption does not have any other name. It's either you've stolen, you are a thief, you've actually pilfered, whatever you're looting. First of all, let the government recover all what you have. you've been mentioned, right? right? Recover first. You also go to court. Let us now claim what you are claiming uh, that the government has so that we also recover what we need from the other side. It will be very simple like that. All right. We won't even drag anybody in court. The only simple thing is that the way somebody can get into snatching some phones and you deal with them instantly, the same thing we need to start doing so right. that you will see there will be some sanity in this nation. All right. Many thanks, gentlemen, for coming and sharing your comments. They have been my guests, Ngonjuri Kajoki and Karl Max Otieno, both a political analyst. Now, coming up next is why Mashariki and DJ Teska is very much ready. I hope you're ready uh, back home. Uh, from me here, many thanks. I will see you again. Have yourself a good night. My name is Dereva Hilary. <laughs>